Hi everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today, I've got an exciting new addition to my workbench. I have the Quick TS-1200A soldering station. I'm going to compare and contrast it to my existing unit, the Hakko FX951, which has been a really good soldering station, but there's a couple things that I really like about the Quick, and I decided to get it based on a viewer's request. Let's get right into it. I'm going to go over the similarities, the differences, and we're going to do a speed test to see which one heats up solder the fastest. So stay tuned. First thing I'd like to cover is how to turn the unit on. I prefer the Hakko method, which is a flip switch. So I can flick it on and I can go about my work. The quick unit, you have to press and hold for a couple seconds and it will turn on. It goes to a splash screen and then it starts heating up. You can see it heats up really quickly. On the front, there's three preset buttons, and they're currently set at 320, 350, and 260 degrees centigrade. There's a bunch of other menus that go into extended options, but at this point, right now, all I need to do is turn it on. The temperatures are already configured at an acceptable level. I'm going to use it just as it is. On the Hakko unit, the iron has a red LED ring which shows that it's currently on. As you just heard, when I released it from the cradle, it went from sleep mode, which is a lower temperature, up to its operating temperature, which is 375 degrees. You never physically touch the heating element. You squeeze two grips on the pen and you separate the element. You change tips, which I have a whole selection of tips here. You press on the new tip and it goes into its heating mode. When you place the pencil on the cradle, it goes into a sleep mode, which is a decreased temperature, which prevents the tip from being oxidized. Now, I'm not sure if the Quick has a sleep mode other than time-based. In the menu, you can go in and you can set the amount of minutes until it goes into a sleep. When you pick the unit up, there is no recognizable difference. I'll have to go into the manual later and read up on it. I'm not really sure at this moment. But the pencil itself, it's got a rubberized grip and it's very comfortable and the working distance is very comfortable as well. The cord is pliable, easy to move around, it doesn't hinder my movements and the cradle is very firm. I, I really like it. It's a weighted cradle, it won't tip over and the tip cleaner is embedded into the cradle. Now one of the things I would like to cover is the tip that's included with the unit. The tip that's included is a pointed hook style. I'm not sure if it was supposed to just be a point or if it's a pointed hook because it was bent when I got it. But one thing I am sure of is when you apply solder to the tip, it wants to sit at the bottom of the hook and it never really truly wants to go to the tip. And that's a shame too because when you're working with the tip heating up small components you need that solder to go to the tip to ensure thermal conductivity but the tip also oxidized a little bit so I retinned it and cleaned it and it seemed to have solved that problem at the moment one of the other things I'd like to go over is how the probes connect to the base the pen has a female connector and it's got a spring-loaded catch. So when you plug it in, it's keyed so it will index correctly and when you plug it in, it's a firm latch and it won't pull out. The Hakko also has a spring-loaded catch, but I don't really think it's as good as the one on the Quick. However, one of the things I do appreciate is that on the Hakko, it's male sided pins on the probe because one of the things that's going to break is the pin itself. So if you have something that's going to break, you'd prefer it to be on the consumable, which is the probe. It's much easier than repairing a female port. On the quick unit, you can see that the male pins are on the base and the pen is the female. And if you break the pins on the port, you're going to be replacing the whole port inside the unit versus on the Hakko, if you break the pins, you're just going to be replacing a pencil. It's going to be much easier and much cheaper. 
I don't disconnect my pencils too often. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. But just be cognizant of that, that the pins are the most fragile connection and it is the pins on the quick unit instead of on the pencil. In order to change temperature on the quick unit, you just press a simple touch button. It's quick, it's easy, and the temperature change is pretty dramatic. And you see, within just a couple seconds, it's at the set temperature. Now, on the Hako unit, if you want to change the temperature, you first have to have the key. When the key is inserted, then you can go in and you can set the temperature up and down. I would much, much rather have quick set buttons. I just pre-program based on the solder type that I'm using, and it's over and done. This one here, you have to go into menus and press up and down multiple times. That's garbage. I can see why they did it, because it's a condensed platform but I'd much rather the quick unit. So even though the quick unit doesn't have the sleep mode, it has a larger footprint, so it sits very squarely on top of my quick hot air station. You can see, it doesn't really want to move around, versus this unit here, you know, even if I was pulling on the cord a little bit, I'd always have to straighten it out on top of my unit, because you can see that there's a ribbed midsection here. The Hako unit would want to sit right on top of that rib, but it wouldn't sit really squarely, and if you moved it at all, it would want to kind of tip over. It was just kind of a pain. So that was the primary reason why I went with this unit here. You can see that it sits square, even, and it's very sturdy. One of the advantages of the quick unit, since the iron is always on, I can solder one wire together, then heat shrink it immediately with the hot air station, and then move to the next wire, and I don't have to worry about this time delay where it has to come back up the temperature. So every time I put my iron down, it goes into sleep mode, it starts cooling down, and then I lift it up to do the next wire, and then I have to wait. And I understand I can disconnect the cable in the back, which would disable the sleep function, but it's kind of nice on this unit here. It's always on. And when I'm done with the job, I'll shut the iron off. Or it has a menu option. So you can go into the menus and you can set it so that after a certain period of time has passed, it will automatically go into a sleep mode, which is kind of a cool feature, just in case you leave your iron on. Next, we're gonna do a temperature test. Both irons are gonna be allowed to cool down, and we're gonna set this one to 375, I think that's its current normal settings, this one at 350, and we're gonna see which iron can melt solder the fastest. For the next test, we're gonna do the solder melting test. The iron on the right goes to the quick, the iron on the left goes to the Hako FX. And the solder we're using is 6040 tin lead, 1.22 millimeter. It's a hefty solder, but it'll give you a better idea of what these irons can handle. I'm going to turn both units on. Both irons are cold to the touch. I'm going to turn them on at the exact same time. And we're going to see which one melts the solder first. Remember, the quick is set at 350 degrees, the Hakko is set at 375 degrees. Oh, look at that. Ooh. In the last test, the iron on the left maybe didn't have good enough contact with the solder because it didn't melt until I touched it. So I'm going to do this test again. Both irons are cold to the touch and the solder should be exactly on the hot points of both irons. I'm going to turn them both on and we're going to see which one melts the solder the fastest again. Okay, so one, two, three. There it goes. Absolutely. Obviously the quick soldering iron has more output, more heat, because um, it instantly melts the solder. It wasn't a matter of whether or not I could touch the solder and added a little more force to it. It just did it. And this would be the third or fourth test I've tried, and 
every time it's about half the time of the of the Hako unit. So there you have it. The quick unit melts solder very quickly, very easily. It's an excellent iron. It's very comfortable. I've already done some rework with it and it seems to be good enough in that respect, but I wish it just had a chisel tip like here on my Hako. Would I buy it again? Absolutely. I need a unit that's very powerful. Sometimes I'm repairing a board that's got a very large ground plane and it'll have a solder mass for heat conductivity and I need an iron that's got a lot of power that can just power through it without destroying the board. I don't want to heat the board up too much. I just want to heat up the solder mass so that I can get the components out. This is going to be an excellent device for that, especially with a better tip. This unit I bought off eBay for $190. However, you can buy it out of other retailers. Just be careful that they're going to also add on shipping fees. This came from a U.S. supplied warehouse. I paid $0 in shipping, so $190. The Hako unit, I don't even remember how much I paid for it. It's still an excellent iron, and maybe I'll just have two different soldering tips, one for really fine work and one for just doing uh, large thermal components. I found a permanent fixture for my workbench. Hope you guys liked the video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. I've got plenty of other excellent videos heading your way.